Out of all the first class seats in the world, this is without a doubt the strangest one. It happens to be on one of my top airlines, but it's one that I haven't really shown you guys much. While you've undoubtedly seen tons of Qatar Airways and Emirates on my channel, Oman Air, their little neighbor with so much potential doesn't tend to get as many views and hence as a full-time YouTuber, it's difficult to justify choosing them over a more well-known airline. Today, I hope to shed light on not only this fascinating first class seat, but also the incredible Oman Air first class experience from start to finish. If you didn't already, by the end of the video, you'll know not to sleep on this little powerhouse of an airline. Let's go. If you're new here, you might think, why listen to me? Who is this random dude? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Sweden, half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. After flying into Dubai from Tunis, where Oscar and I had just spent a week exploring our 98th country, it's time to head to country 99 via Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. To get there, I've booked Oman Air first class through Muscat with an insane deal, paying about $1,200 one way for this first class ticket through a hack I'll share at the end of the video. Now, welcome to Dubai International Airport's Terminal 1, the terminal every airline except Emirates, Fly Dubai, and a few other low-cost carriers operate out of. This this terminal is a real OG in Dubai and is more reminiscent of Deira than the flashy new Dubai we all know. After check-in, we head to the Sky Team Lounge through Priority Pass since I want to check it out, even though Oman Air actually gives its business class passengers on this route access to a first class lounge a little distance away in the terminal. After a productive hour spent in the company of 100 Russians flying back to Moscow, we head to the gate and hop on board this Boeing 737 MAX 8 delivered in 2019. I've reviewed this product before and I still think it's excellent in terms of privacy and comfort. The recline isn't good enough for a red eye in my opinion and Oman Air uses this aircraft on flights up to 7 hours. So if you're considering their new route to Phuket for example, you might want to go via Bangkok on their 787 instead. I'm welcomed on board by the entirely male Omani cabin crew who are just as friendly as most other Omanis. If you've been to Oman, you'll know that it's a real challenge finding more hospitable and amiable people anywhere else in the world. From the outrageously beautiful pillow to the pre-departure drinks presented on a gold tray with a scented hot towel, it's hard not to be impressed considering this is a 45 minute flight. Also, did you think Nonstop Dan was going to choose anything other than lemon mint in the Middle East? Let's take a little look around the seat. Soon enough, the nostalgic safety video plays, which highlights the beauty of Oman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oman Air. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Greetings. I think we could all do without the overly exaggerated British narrators they love in this region, though. Or is it just me? One thing I do love is that Oman Air cabin crew start each announcement by saying, Dear Valued Guest. For example, Good evening, Dear Valued Guest. We kindly ask you to take your seats in preparation for takeoff. Quite the contrast to, Folks, we're going to need you to sit down now. We push back 15 minutes early given that we're only about 50 people on board, but subsequently have a long 20 minute taxi. It's my first time ever taking off from runway 30 left in Dubai and oh boy, given how light we are, we fly over the airport for a good 20 seconds after liftoff, which of course is ab geek heaven. Outside, the sun is setting over the world islands.
On this flight, they're offering lamb or cheese sandwiches, and as far as I can tell, none of the four business class passengers have opted to eat. I quickly explore the entertainment system, which is definitely a small step under their regional competitors, but still in the top 10% of airlines worldwide. Not only do they have good shows, but they have so many episodes of each one. For a 737 MAX, the bathroom is also quite nice and they've stocked it with all types of luxurious amenities. Before I know it, we're touching down in the Sultanate of Oman. We taxi quickly to our gate before we clear transit security and pop up to the lounge. We're spending the night in Muscat, and although it's possible to get a free bedroom at the Muscat Prime Class Lounge, which is my favorite priority pass in the whole world, these rooms are subject to availability and I don't want to risk it, so I pre-booked a room at the Air Hotel, an airside transit hotel for $130. First, however, we want dinner. Poor Oscar is only traveling in business class since there was only one award seat in first class. I know, share some sympathy for him in the comments below. So we decide to spend the evening in the business class lounge. Here, we get treated like absolute royalty on account of my first class ticket. The first class lounge chef comes to ask what he can cook for us. It's extremely rare for lounges to have chefs cooking food on the spot rather than reheating it. Not even Lufthansa's first class terminal or Qatar Airways Al Safwa lounge have chefs that cook fresh food. So here we order two plates of pasta, although the buffet is already more than sufficient. You can never go wrong with meze and Arabic coffee. We're also given scented hot towels. Do I even need to express my joy in this moment? As we finish eating, the lovely Thai hostess insists on showing me the first class lavatories. Ugh, God forbid I use the business class lavatories, which are already some of the nicest bathrooms I've ever seen in the lounge. Reaching the first class bathrooms requires walking through the first class lounge, which is deserted. The design is just amazing. I let out an audible gasp when we reach the first class bathrooms. These toiletries from Omani luxury brand Amouage are among the most expensive in the world. I also get a peek into the shower rooms, which are small, but also exude luxury. We make our way to the Air Hotel, which is frankly much nicer than I'd expected. The room feels nothing like a transit hotel and has the best noise isolation I've ever experienced at an airport. We dim the lights to get our bodies to wind down and by some miracle, we're both out cold within an hour. Waking up eight hours later, ready for a new day of fun. Out our window, we have stunning views of the mountains surrounding Muscat. Do yourself a favor and visit this country if you haven't already. It's time for Oman Air Lounge round two. This time I'm spending a whole hour by myself in the first class lounge, where I'm greeted by four Omani men who take really good care of me. Between them, it doesn't take more than two seconds for someone to appear if I even raise my eyes for a millisecond. I'm presented with this extremely over-the-top platter for 6.30 a.m. with dates and Arabic coffee. Over time, I've grown more comfortable in first-class lounges. The first dozen or so times I visited, I felt so out of place. And then I realized that regardless of age, clothing, or luggage brand, anyone who's flying first-class deserves to be in the first-class lounge. Period. So if you're flying first class for the first time, don't let the staff, or even more importantly, other passengers, let you feel judged. I don't have time to sit for too long because it's time for my 7 a.m. spa appointment. First class passengers get a free 15 minute treatment and can supplement for additional time. The Egyptian masseuse tries to upsell me and although I'm in first class, I'm not about to spend $30 to extend my massage by 15 more minutes. Wow, that was one of the best massages I've had in my life. She was such a pro. During the massage, she says, your shoulder is very tight. I go, wow, how can you tell from my feet? She goes, I've been a masseuse for 17 years, I know. 
As I get back downstairs, the staff is eager to get me fed. I have a look at both the dinner and breakfast menus. Following another cup of Arabic coffee and a tower of nuts and treats, they bring me this wonderful full medamas, some vegetable focaccia-esque bread, and a fruit plate with mango compote. I leave the lounge so stuffed I'm worried I won't be able to eat all flight. As I meet up with Oscar, we're escorted to the gate, which is apparently standard for first class passengers. Although unnecessary, you feel like a total VIP, so it's definitely a fun thing to experience. Our first two times in Oman, we flew from the old terminal, and I'm still in awe when I see the transformation. Since then, my experience with airlines has grown, while my wallet has shrunk in the literal sense. Although I travel with all my credit cards, over 25 of them, an impressive 12 of those fit in my compact Ridge wallet, which not only looks amazing, but helps me save so much space in my carry-on. Of course, it also has a strap, so you can easily bring cash as well. With a 99-day return period and free lifetime warranty on all products, a Ridge wallet is a perfect Christmas gift, especially combined with the insane offer of up to 40% off at ridge.com slash nonstopdan through December 22nd. You can also check out their equally space-saving key case again at ridge.com slash nonstopdan. So just as I suspected, I am the only one in first class, which means this is going to be good. <laughs> We inquired about upgrading Oscar, but apparently upgrades are impossible on award tickets. Don't worry though, when you see the business class on this bad boy, I doubt you'll feel bad. The Oman Air A330-300 has the most unique commercial A330 configuration out there. From above, it looks like there are eight first class seats. However, there are actually only six. You'll see what I mean shortly. Since I was alone, I had free range of where to sit. Had the cabin been full, however, I would have chosen row one for more privacy. Business class has the same one to one configuration, but spread across five rows for a total of 20 seats. Oscar was in 15A and he recorded a bunch, so you'll get to see the business class experience as well. What a comprehensive review. Let's get on board, shall we? Welcome to Oman Air's A330-300 First Class. This aircraft is 13 years old and is the best evidence I can find of how fast aircraft cabins have modernized. The age is more noticeable in the seat finishes rather than the seat itself. This is row one. You see this? These are not real seats. They have seat belts, are extremely comfortable, and it cracks me up because they could have totally been sold as first class seats for a couple and everyone would be happy, but no. This is the communal couch. This might be the most useless aircraft feature I've ever witnessed. I mean, everybody has such plush, comfortable seats of their own. Who on earth is gonna leave their belongings and sit in this more exposed couch overlooking a very rustic TV? As someone when traveling alone, I absolutely love it for the ridiculousness. It's so insanely lavish and unnecessary that it's hard not to love, but it makes me wonder why they didn't just put two more first class seats here instead. As I was saying, the actual seats are more than comfortable enough. I'm almost equally puzzled by the fact that there are storage bins along the side that are almost as wide as the seat itself. Seems illogical when they could have just made a wider seat with more built-in storage, especially considering the two middle seats don't have these bins, making them vastly inferior. But that's a question for the seat designer. There is so much storage here, it's absolutely insane. You guys might have noticed that the ceiling is unusually high, which is due to the lack of overhead bins. Instead, first class passengers store their bags in these lockers behind the couch area. The most aged element of these seats are those that contain any sort of technology, like these seat controls, which are also upside down for some reason. The remote is 
itty bitty and controls this low quality screen, which to my surprise has two exterior cameras. I already showed the entertainment system on my previous flight, but I just want to mention that the system is even more extensive on this aircraft. For example, they have the entire seventh season and half the eighth season of Friends, Parks and Rec, The Office, and all of the Good Place season one and much more. This goes along with the headphones, which I'm initially quite skeptical of, but the noise cancellation and sound is pretty great. These are plugged in down here where you'll find all the ports to fulfill your every charging need. Back in business class, the seat is very similar to first class, just that it has no privacy whatsoever and looks like a historical artifact. That aside, it's really a fantastically luxurious business class seat even to this day. There is just as much storage back here. At the front in first class, I don't know who's more excited to get the service started, me or the crew, but they eagerly bring me my pre-departure beverage of choice, say it with me, lemon mint, along with some nuts, a hot towel, and Arabic coffee. They also have me the amenity kit on a silver tray because why not? In business class, the pre-departure service is virtually identical. Before I know it, we're pushing back on this hazy November day. And this aircraft is so old, the in-flight map doesn't even think the new airport exists yet. So we're taxiing through the desert. As we take off, I want to remind you of my subscribers only giveaway where you have the chance to win a flight that you can give away to someone else you think deserves it. All you have to do is be subscribed, it's free, and then you can enter at the link in the description. I've mentioned I'm alone, but I just need to emphasize that being alone in this cabin obviously makes the experience far more incredible than if the cabin had been full. Despite the good privacy here, this probably isn't a seat I'd be thrilled to pay many thousands of dollars for compared to Emirates or Etihad. The Oman Air 787 is a completely different story though, but as a diehard Avgi, getting to experience this product brings me so much joy it's difficult to put into words. Given that I can eat whenever I want, I ask to hold off on the food, but the crew insists I take at least quote unquote a little bit of snacks and hand me this. They also set up a fruit station by the couch as one does. Let's get two things out of the way because this review is really taking time, isn't it? First of all, there are no individual air vents and the cabin was quite hot during the flight. There was also supposed to be Wi-Fi, but it didn't work all flight, which was a bummer. You'll see me constantly hopping back and forth to get better lighting, which is a crazy luxury on any any plane. The Amouage amenity kit is screaming my name. There are two Amouage perfumes inside along with some other necessities. The business class amenity kit is significantly scaled down which is sad to see compared to the extravagant kits they offered just a few years ago. In the lavatory there are some more Amouage products to enjoy but only in first class. I work for a few more hours as I enjoy Arabic coffee upon Arabic coffee. I think I'll get Sinbad gold just based on how many round trips I'm taking to and from the bathroom. Apparently back in business class, there's quite a lot of excitement, including economy passengers constantly coming up and sitting in the business class seats, causing the cabin crew a lot of trouble. They also didn't load Oscar's special meal, which is a huge frustration, especially given that being a Middle Eastern airline, we're quite certain that won't yield any compensation. I have several friends who've had similar issues with Oman Air, as have I in the past. Oscar ends up getting a crew assembled assortment of random little dishes and the crew was extremely apologetic. My crew is fantastic, calling me Mr. Dan in even the smallest interactions. At some points, I notice that the service is not quite as polished as on some of the finer airlines in the world, which is only interesting because I know Oman Air recruited a previous Qatar Airways cabin crew trainer, so I was constantly on the lookout for similarities and differences. As we leave the east coast of India behind, the crew make up my bed. 
Needless to say, sleeping here won't be a problem in the slightest between the opulent foot space, the comfy bedding and mattress pad and the privacy. The seat by first class standards is slightly narrow as a bed. It's pretty much the width of two MacBook Pros, which is of course the unit I use to measure everything in my life. I'm kidding. In business class, the bed is quite similar, but without the mattress pad. Three hours before landing, I request my meal, which is really too early given my big breakfast, but daylight is the most precious resource when shooting videos in flight and shouldn't be wasted. After debating whether I should have lunch in bed or to my regular seat, I opt for lunch in bed because I love the constant fear of spilling food all over myself and the seat. The menu comes in this nice binder, but then the paper is completely and utterly destroyed when you open it. The dishes look okay. The wine list, on the other hand, is impressive. I'm quick to discover that my suspicion based on the menu is true, which wouldn't really take a genius to figure out. The meal is not lunch, but breakfast. Notoriously the worst airplane meal. This is the great table setup, but it's a shame the menu doesn't hold the same standard. The starters, grilled vegetables, it's not a hit. Sometimes I get comments from people saying I shouldn't review food since I don't eat meat and it doesn't represent the quality of the regular meals. As someone who's flown hundreds of flights in business class, I beg to differ and I'd like to say that 90% of the time, the special meals do in fact reflect the quality of the regular meals when flying from an airline's hub. Nice up this plate of vomit? I think this was some sort of attempt at congee. And to be honest, it tasted better than it looked. As that course is finished, I'm shocked to find out that is it for the meal in first class. Clearly that's not enough food for a first class review. So I asked to try the meze off the menu, which as expected, although being a regular dish is no higher in quality than the rest of the food I was served. I'm sad to see the state of Oman Air's meal service. This just isn't the quality I associate with them. To round it all off, some plain old fruit. <laughs> Two hours later, after plenty more productive work, we're approaching Kuala Lumpur. Do you guys also work more efficiently on planes than anywhere else? I think there's something about the lack of refrigerator to check every five minutes that's extremely helpful in remaining focused. Overall, I had such a great 24 hours with Oman Air and at Muscat Airport, both at the Transit Hotel and of course in the fantastic lounge. It's clear there's been quite a lot of cost cutting at the airline in the past few years, and this specifically is not a product I'd recommend seeking out for any other reason than taking it off your bucket list. I must say that the Oman Air First Class soft product feels more like Business Class Plus rather than a true First Class like you'll find on Emirates. The only route where the airline seems truly committed to First Class is London, so that would be the ideal route to try on their flagship 787. Until then, thanks for this time Oman Air and thanks for watching my friends. Now, how did I pay? I'm sure you diehard frequent flyers out there knew the second you saw the title because yes, like everyone else, I used Aeroplan miles for my ticket. Specifically, I paid 80,000 miles one way from Dubai to Kuala Lumpur and $40 in taxes, which is pretty expensive for this route, to be honest. I've depleted almost all my credit card points with Aeroplan over the past year, so I went wild and bought a ton of points with them on sale for 1.34 cents each, meaning I effectively paid around $1,200 one way for this ticket. If you travel less frequently than me, which I really hope you do for your mental and physical health sake, you're much better off using credit card points and transferring those over to Aeroplan. Right now, I keep going on and on about the amazing American Express Gold Card, which has a great sign-up bonus that can be transferred to Air Canada Aeroplan, and now you can even apply without affecting your credit score at all. The card offers all types of incredibly generous bonuses, including high points earnings on all types of activities. For me, it's a no-brainer card to have in your Ridge wallet. And if you buy a Ridge wallet or apply for the American Express Gold Card via my link in the description, you're supporting my channel, something I am so grateful for. Thanks for watching you guys. And until I see you next time, fly safe.